Hi everyone! The initial bars of both the four-bar antecedent and consequent phrases of this rondo's theme are based on a canon at the fifth. In the antecedent phrase, the leader in the right hand consists of four dyads located on C majors third, first, second and seventh degrees, and the follower in the left hand also consists of four dyads located on C majors sixth, fourth, fifth and third degrees. When these two parts are staggered, the resulting harmonies produce a 16251 progression in C major, the supertonic and tonic chords of which are both inverted. After moving through a 2-5 imperfect cadence concluding the antecedent phrase, Mozart then uses the same dyad series to begin the consequent. The leader and follower of these bars, however, includes slight changes, which may be understood as a swapping of these two dyads. This analysis, however, doesn't account for the inexact melodic contours between the canon and the right and left hands. It's only when we consider that Mozart was here probably, to borrow terminology from 12-tone theory, using part of the follower in retrograde against the same section in the leader, that we may understand the melodic discrepancies between the parts. In this way, while the leader and follower's melodic contours are still inexact, the use of part of the follower in retrograde continues the canonic basis of these bars. The changes may also be a result of Mozart wanting to have all chords of this canon's underlying progression in root position. The second canonic section then proceeds with a 2-5-1 cadence concluding the rondo's theme. Harmonically, the canon in both phrases produce the same progression, one which may be heard as an extended cadential progression and as a partial cycle of fifths, preceded by tonic harmony. The upper dyads of both canonic sections also include 5-4-3 strands, which form part of the overall 5-1 descents in each phrase. I hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching. See you next time.